This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build an online presence and run your business. Just before the theory of Terra Australis, a giant southern landmass that kept the world balanced, was debunked by James Cook's second voyage in the 1770s, one of the most interesting depictions of Terra Australis was published. First published in 1739, republished in 1754, and continuing until 1770, this map shows an inland body of water running right through it. This inland sea, like Terra Australis, was of course purely theoretical. It never existed, but this makes it no less interesting. In this video, I'll briefly explain where this idea came from, and the background of the cartographer who created the map. This may seem a little odd today. Why would someone just take a guess and put it on the same map with clear facts? But theoretical geography was a common and an accepted practice until all of what would have been blank parts on the map were thoroughly surveyed. Now these theories weren't just complete guesses though. It was what the cartographer thought was the most likely geography based off of what sources were available, though there was often some wishful thinking involved, especially when it came to potential shorter trade routes. And the creator of this map, Philippe Bouache, was a man of many theories. Bouache married the daughter of who is probably the most famous French cartographer of all time, Guillaume de Lille. De Lille took a more scientific approach to map making than most European cartographers had before him. I'm talking primarily about the Dutch. Their maps were highly decorative, often depicting interesting creatures such as sea monsters, mermaids, and giants. De Lille, a pioneer of this scientific style, was highly influential in this transition to a more modern approach to cartography. De Lille passed this on to Bouache, as well as a craving for theoretical geography. For example, though De Lille never published a map showing it, he had speculated the existence of the Sea of the West. Check out this map Bouache made in 1756, which I think really highlights the type of geographer he was. This map uses a north polar projection to better display a couple of his original ideas. Bouache was the first geographer to survey a river basin and suggested that a basin had topographical unity. Basins are shown on this map, each separated by mountain ranges, which provided routes for rivers to flow to the sea. Some of the ranges are real, while others are where Bouache hypothesized they must be based off of known directional flow of rivers. These hypothetical mountain ranges included underwater ranges, which connected each continent. He created other regional maps with this same watershed, basin, and mountain range theme. These are some of the earliest thematic maps, and were likely extremely influential in promoting maps usage in this way. The John Snow Cholera map, which is often cited as popularizing the usage of thematic maps, was not created until nearly a century after this map. Now let's take a closer look at the main map in question. But first, I want to share with you today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a simple to use website builder and hosting platform, but you can do more than build a professional looking website. Squarespace has tons of tools to help you grow your business, such as email campaigns. They make it easy to collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. You start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site colors and logo, and there are built-in analytics that measure the impact of every send. And Squarespace makes it easy for creators and educators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like classes, online courses, or newsletters. And when selling these products, you can accept PayPal, Apple Pay, Stripe, and Venmo, making sure you don't leave any potential customers behind. Head to squarespace.com slash geographygeek for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Bouache called this land Terra Antarctique, where most maps outside of France were calling it Terra Australis. This French word, Antarctique, is where the name Antarctica came from which means opposite to the Arctic. It can be traced back to Latin and Greek usage, but the French usage is ultimately what gave the continent its name. Had the continent been discovered sooner, it may have been named Australia after Terra Australis. But respected British navigator and cartographer Matthew Flinders in 1814 wrote, there is no probability that any other detached body of land of nearly equal extent will ever be found in a more southern latitude and suggested the name Australia. 
By the time it became clear there actually was a large landmass further south in Australia, it was too late. And so the name Antarctica eventually stuck. The continent's shape is partially guesswork, but it is also largely based on real events. Voyages that sailed south pushed back the boundaries of Terra Australis, and discoveries and contacts created the highlighted borders, such as New Zealand, which was first contacted by Europeans in 1643 by Dutch explorer Abel Tasman on its western coast, and Amerigo Vespucci's discovery of new land here in 1503, though this one is disputed by scholars. But extremely important to this map and where the inland sea theory derives from is the 1738-39 expedition led by Jean-Baptiste Charlet Bouvet de Lozier. Bouvet de Lozier was sent by the French India Company for the purpose of exploring the South Atlantic. He discovered and named Cape Circumcision. An inset of Cape Circumcision is drawn in the bottom right. However, it was foggy, and Bouvet de Lozier failed to see that it was actually an island. This island was eventually named for him in 1927. Bouvet de Lozier's journals mentioned icebergs, also depicted here, between two and three hundred feet high and half a league to two or three leagues in circumference. Bouache believed that icebergs of this size must have derived from a floating ice sheet. He hypothesized that there must be an inland sea that separated Terra Australis into two landmasses, with outlets on near opposite sides, both where icebergs had been spotted. Bouvet de Lozier's in 1738, and the second place where buccaneers named Sharp and Davis reported icebergs in 1687. On the map, the sea is described as a landlocked basin. The text goes on to say that the inland sea is fed by rivers as considerable as those of Siberia, which create the icebergs of the north. He called the sea Mer Glacial, or the Glacial Sea. The Glacial Sea died with Terra Australis soon after Cook sailed into the Antarctic zone, but it does make at least one appearance after Cook's second voyage was well known. Here it is on a 1788 map by another French cartographer, Jean-Baptiste Louis Clouet. But Cook's second voyage is actually drawn on the map as well, which runs right through the two landmasses and the Glacial Sea. I know some will say this is remnants of long lost knowledge that managed to actually survive to today, which is certainly fun to consider, but Bouache made it clear the Glacial Sea was never proven. As shown earlier in the video, the text shows where he got his theory, and he actually made a second map that displayed what was really known. Here, Terra Australis is absent from the map, and there is a highlighted area for what was yet to be explored. And right in the middle of the map with Terra Australis and the Glacial Sea, he placed the word Conjecture. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, and subscribe if you haven't already. I have many more old map videos in the works. Thank you to all my Patreon and YouTube members for supporting the channel, and thank you all for watching.